Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a draw my life. So to start off with, my mum gave birth to me on the 5th of Jan, 2000. In 2002, when I was two, I was watching my mum cut some potatoes. And then the phone rang and I decided I'll help her cut the potatoes. And she was using a really sharp knife and I nearly cut my pinky finger off and look, it's now left a scar of my initial. It's a C! <laughs> cut right down to the bone, I should have gone to the hospital but... YOLO! And then in 2003, my brother was born and 13 years later, he's now roughly this tall. That's his neck. When I was eight, my mum and my dad broke up. Yeah, school and shit happened, you know, the awful place we call school which just has fire and hell and destruction. Well, no, actually, my school life was pretty good. My great friends. That was until year eight. So I was 13 at the time. And there was this rumour going around that I was pregnant and I was like the fuck <laughs> I didn't find out I was apparently pregnant till break time today but you know however everyone kept staring at me in class to see if I had a bump and stuff and that was like the first time I ever really became self-conscious and yeah just destroyed my confidence basically so now I stopped talking and I was no longer all that outgoing. Then, some comments by some jealous bitches managed to get to me. And I felt this big and like I was trapped. And basically, I decided to start self-harming. My left arm began to get slashed with a sewing needle. I found myself too pussy, too wimpy to cut with a knife, so I made scratches with a sewing needle. I didn't think that was worth self-harming because it was hardly cutting. Year 9 slash 10 came around, I was 14, 15. I went on the computer where I saw lots of things to do with not eating and getting thinner. Basically, I went on Proanna. Proanna sites are nothing but brainwashing and dangerous. Right, they are seriously dangerous. So I went on those and I thought, you know what? Being anorexic sounds appealing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the right thing to do, because I was fucked up and in a vulnerable place. So I went on that and I stopped eating. My mum noticed and obviously she started to get really worried that I wasn't eating. She phoned up the non-emergency service, which I think is 111, I'm not sure, saying, I, I think my daughter has an eating disorder. And they gave her a list of the symptoms, and then she was just like, yes, yes, she does. It was quite horrible, really, because I was determined, my goal weight was to get to four and a half stone. Now, I, I don't know what that is in pounds for American people, Kilos, it's something like 21, something like that, which is what, under fives way. Okay, but I was determined that unless I was that weight, that skinny, there was no point to anything. And I'm someone who's bubbly and happy and doesn't give a shit about anything. And I was obsessed with this, it was my life, which just made no sense. It was completely contradictory to my personality. You know, my mum's a chef, my dad's Homer Simpson, so where I got it from. Who, but yeah, I used to make my mum cry every single day because she said, oh my God, you're killing yourself. And I just thought, I have no intention of dying. That's the wrong dying, isn't it? When you dye clothes. Ugh, that doesn't look right. Oh, who cares? But that didn't stop her crying because I didn't see what I was doing to myself. And it was heartbreaking for me to know that I was bringing her all this misery and everyone around me. But it still wasn't enough for me to want to stop. And then the school were just like, 
You have your exams in a year. Are you joking? Are you bloody joking? And that when they found out I wasn't eating, they were just like, right, go to the doctors. And I was just like, ugh. Because obviously I didn't want them to stop me doing anything. You're gonna make me put on weight and stuff. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, so I went to the doctors. They said, okay, you definitely have anorexia nervosa. That is your diagnosis. And I was just like, fudge. I didn't believe I had an eating disorder. I thought, well, I still eat every day. I, I had like one bowl of cereal a day, if that, to be honest. And I still thought that didn't count because if I was anorexic, I wouldn't be eating. If I was anorexic, I'd be skinny and all that. I lost a stone in a month. And then after that, I lost one to two kilos a week. That's how quickly I was losing weight. I never got that skinny. I was never hospitalized, okay? But I was losing weight and my body functions stopped working, such as I lost my period. I was beginning to get infertile. I wasn't drinking to the extent I started to have red wee. I actually thought my period had come back. I thought I got my period back because my wee was so red. That's how scary it got. I had blood tests every week or so. I was breathless all the time. I felt like I was going to faint. I felt like I was going to throw up. At one point, okay, I didn't even have enough stamina to take a shower. I struggled showering because I just got so breathless. I was always so cold. Oh my god. I, I didn't have enough energy to retain my body heat. It was just awful. And then I still felt I wasn't getting any skinnier. I was wearing size 6 clothes now. My diet was supposed to be under 300 calories a day. And I needed to burn at least 1000 calories a day. That was what I tried to stick to. Guess how that went? <laughs> During all this, Izzy was just my knight in shining armour. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. You know, even when my parents couldn't get through to me, when I was making my brother, my 13-year-old brother, worry to death about me, when he should be having a carefree life, I, I just thought this isn't right, you know, but it still didn't make me stop. And then Izzy took a head-on approach. She did not let me leave her sight. She inspected my arms all the time. She never actually mentioned food that much. It wasn't the issue, it was just making sure I was happy, I was alright at, at that moment, and that I wouldn't do anything stupid. And she was always on the other end of the phone when I needed her. So all I have to say is thank you. I love you. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do without you. Okay, before this cheese fest carries on, let's get to... The happy stuff. Oh, bollocks. So, year 11 came around, and I was 16. I stopped going to school altogether and had to go to an alternative learning centre. So I wasn't at school, I wasn't having any lessons, I didn't see anybody, I completely isolated myself from everyone and everything. I couldn't even go to Sainsbury's without having a full-on panic attack. And then I discovered some YouTubers called the Janoskians. Now, they made me laugh so much. They made me so happy. So I'm just going to say thank you right now just for that, Janos. What really helped, you know, what got through to me when nobody else could, like I was literally on my hands and knees about to purge into the toilet bowl, right? If you don't know what purging is, it's making yourself sick so that you'll throw up everything that's inside you. I was about to purge, and I was playing really loud music so that nobody would hear me gagging. And one song that came on, Real Girls Eat Cake. That song got through to me when nobody else could. It conflicted me more than anything, so fuck you, Janos. You conflicted me so much, <laughs> but ultimately, and I don't think this is too dramatic to say. I think that song is the reason I was never hospitalised. And I'm gonna get it tattooed on my wrist. So that if I ever get Anna Thoughts again, I'll think of you five idiots. And then, in Easter 2016, I decided to shave my head for charity 
a charity called Beat, which is B-Eat, where it's the leading UK charity to try and beat eating disorders. And I managed to raise about 800 quid, and it's still my pinned tweet. I haven't actually closed the d donations yet. So and at that point, I still wasn't recovering, but I decided to shave my head. So I clearly knew that what I was doing was wrong at that point. Like, there was doubt in my mind, which was, you know, the first step to maybe recovering. My actual exams got closer and closer, and I thought, well, actually, I do want to pass them. I ended up actually trying to work really, really hard in order to get the results I wanted. And then, when the results came in, English, I aced, I got a B. Maths, I got a D, so I'm retaking it. Science, got a C. RE, I got a D. And then textiles, which I worked so hard for, and I only had two days to construct the entire dress and do most of my coursework because I was I had probably the biggest, biggest panic attack I've ever had during my deadline for textiles. And I got a D. And I thought, well, I'm just shit, you know? I didn't get five Cs, therefore I can't do A-levels at college. Blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't until Deji, in one of his videos, said, a letter does not define you. And then I thought, fuck the exam board. They have absolutely no idea the hell I've gone through. And then when I actually did my enrolment in college, they said, that's all right, do a BTEC. And I'm actually doing something I would have preferred to have done to the A-levels I chose. So it all worked out for the better. But I only felt good about them after Deji said that, you know, the, the results do not define you. Because that tells nothing of what I've been through. And then I decided I want to start YouTube. Because YouTube has helped me in more that's annoying me in more ways than one and specific youtubers have influenced me to the extent that i could be in hospital right now however i'm not because they made my day they said the right things and got through to me and i just thought if i could do that for somebody else that would be the cherry on the icing on the cake i think it's the best decision i've ever made so many youtubers have influenced me the thought of me possibly influencing other people based on what I've been through. I just personally want to thank YouTube as well. Thank you! Because I'll probably still be in the wrong mentality without it. And yeah, that's been my life so far. Everything's turning up and looking good. Thumbs up all around. And sunshines and rainbows. And if this hasn't made you vom, this last scene. Then I've got a really, really fun video next, which I'm really excited to film. So stay tuned for that. Cheesy wave. Bye guys.